Tonight, public plea. West Bengal State Chief says willing to resign amid standoff with doctors calling for justice for the victim and wants health care for common people. Ruling out, Donald Trump bails on an additional debate with Kamala Harris. The former US President's response comes despite Harris's challenge for another. Journeying deep, SpaceX's Polaris, Dawn makes history with first private space walk. Tech billionaire Jared Isaacman and crewmate Sarah Gillis marks names among spacefarers. Reminiscing 9-11, New York City pizzerias pay tribute to the city's finest and bravest, replacing celebrity photos with 9-11 first responders. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Adaderna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Aquil Qureshi. A very good evening and welcome down to World News Tonight. We've got key updates to bring to you from around the world and let's begin in India. The West Bengal State Chief Mamata Banerjee publicly apologised yesterday following the rape and murder of a trainee doctor in Kolkata which sparked widespread protest across the country. The August 9th attack on the 31-year-old doctor has fueled nationwide outrage, with campaigners arguing that despite stricter laws, women in India continue to face high levels of sexual violence. Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee stood up by junior doctors who were invited at the State Secretariat for a meeting today. In an emotive speech, said she was not enamoured of the top post in the state and was ready to step down in the interest of the people. Assuring the doctors that no action will be taken against them, she said the government is always ready for a dialogue. Her anger fell on people, who she hinted were masterminding the protest with vested interests. On Monday, the Supreme Court ordered doctors to return to work, but protesters defied the deadline, vowing to continue their strike until their demands are met. While protests in other states have subsided after the Supreme Court created a hospital safety task force, doctors in West Bengal, where the attack occurred at R.G. Carr Medical College and Hospital, have continued their demonstrations. China's foreign ministry said that the country paused provocation and endangered of Chinese sovereignty and security after two German Navy ships sailed through the sensitive Taiwan Strait on the same day. The transit, which included a frigate, was the first of its kind to two, in two decades coming at a time of soaring tensions between Taipei and Beijing. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Mo and Ning emphasized during a briefing that the actions by the German ships cannot be considered under the banner of the freedom of navigation. China, which claims democratically governed Taiwan as its own, says only it exercises sovereignty and jurisdiction over the strait. Both the United States and Taiwan say the strait, a major trade route through which about half of global container ships pass, is an international waterway. Speaking in Berlin, German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius said that he could confirm the passage of the frigate between Baden-Württemberg and supply ship Frankfurt am Main. Taiwan's defense ministry, however, declined immediate comment. Two German naval vessels are en route from South Korea to the Philippines through the South China Sea, in what analysts describe as a show of Berlin's resolve to confront Chinese threats that now extend as far as Europe. A recent report released by the UN analysis that Gaza's economy has shrunk to less than sixth of its size when the Israel-Hamas war began nearly an year ago. While unemployment in the occupied West Bank has nearly tripled, the report particularly draws attention to the underlying challenges of the reconstruction and widespread poverty in the war-torn territory. Pedro Manuel Moreno is the Deputy Secretary General for the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, which authored the report. Gaza's GDP has dropped by an alarming 81% in the last quarter of 2023 alone. The UN trade body said the Palestinian Authority, or PA, is under immense pressure that is jeopardizing its ability to function. The PA exercises limited self-rule in the West Bank, declining international aid and revenue deductions and withholdings by Israel are also adding to the strain on the Palestinians, the report said. 
Israel also routinely deducts so-called martyr payments paid by the PA to families of militants and civilians killed by Israeli forces. Israel accuses the Palestinian Authority of supporting the October 7th attack on Israel. The PA denies promoting violence. Meanwhile, North Korea, for the first time, showed images of the centrifuges that produced fuel for its nuclear bombs, as leader Kim Jong-un visited uranium enrichment facilities and called more weapons-grade material to boost the arsenal. North Korea displayed images of the centrifuges that produced fuel for its nuclear bombs for the first time on Friday. In a state TV report, leader Kim Jong-un visited the uranium enrichment facility and called for a greater production of weapons-grade material to enhance the nation's nuclear arsenal. It's a rare look at a critical piece of the country's nuclear program, which is banned under multiple United Nations Security Council resolutions. The state media report did not make clear when the visit occurred, nor the facility's location. The report said Kim urged workers to produce more materials for tactical nuclear weapons and saying the nuclear arsenal was important for self-defense against threats from the US and its allies. It also quoted Kim saying that anti-DPRK nuclear threats from the US imperialist-led vassal forces have crossed a red line. Kim highlighted the need to grow centrifuge numbers to exponentially increase nuclear weapons production, which may indicate that North Korea's tactical nuclear designs rely primarily on uranium. This is significant as developing highly enriched uranium is generally less complex than plutonium. One study suggests North Korea may have produced enough fissile material for up to 90 nuclear warheads, though about 50 are believed to be assembled. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. On the road to the White House now, U.S. Republican nominee Donald Trump confirms he would not take part in another debate with Kamala Harris before the November 5th election, which polls show Harris had won Tuesday's presidential debate. U.S. Republican candidate Donald Trump said he would not take part in another debate with Kamala Harris before the November 5th election, with polls indicating Harris had won Tuesday's ABC News presidential debate. Trump made that remark on his Truth Social site and again at a campaign stop in Arizona. So because we've done two debates and because they were successful, there will be no third debate. As everyone saw two nights ago, we had a monumental victory over comrade Kamala Harris in the presidential debate. Six Republican donors and three Trump advisors who spoke to Reuters disagreed. They said they believed Harris had won because the former president struggled to stay on message. Senator Lindsey Graham, a prominent Trump ally, publicly told reporters it was a missed opportunity. At a rally soon after Trump's post went live, Harris said the candidates had a responsibility for a second face-off. According to Nielsen data, an estimated 67 million people watched the debate. A majority of debate watchers said Harris outperformed Trump, according to a CNN flash poll released shortly afterward. And among voters who said they had heard at least something about Tuesday's debate, 53 percent said Harris won, while 24 percent said Trump won, according to a Thursday Reuters Ipsos poll. However, the poll found voters continue to favor Trump over Harris on the economy. The poll also found 54% of registered voters thought one debate between Trump and Harris was enough, while 46% wanted a second. Two astronauts from a SpaceX capsule in Earth's orbit carried out the world's first private spacewalk yesterday. 730 kilometers from Earth, Jared Isaacman is stress-testing his brand-new spacesuit. Peering out from the Crew Dragon capsule, he shared his first impressions. Back at home, we all have a lot of work to do, but from here, Earth sure looks like a perfect world. He's the first private citizen to ever walk in space, the climax of a daring mission. 
With less than three years to prepare, the tech billionaire led a crew of four as far as 1,400 kilometers from Earth aboard a SpaceX vessel, the furthest humans have been since the moon landings. The Dragon spaceship then lowered its altitude and depressurized its cabin before Isaacman popped out of the hatch for just over 10 minutes, followed by crewmate Sarah Gillis. Isaacman bankrolled the mission estimated to have cost hundreds of millions of dollars. He did it to help SpaceX further its quest to put man on Mars. The spacewalk is only part of the adventure. The Polaris Dawn mission is also testing a laser communication system and studying the effects of decompression and radiation on the human body. The first spacewalks were in 1965. Until now, only the Russian, Chinese and American space agencies have achieved the feat. Still in the US, Storm Francine barreled across the US South, unleashed heavy rains and gusty winds that knocked out power to hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses. 12 million people are under flood warnings with heavy rains and possible tornadoes expected through tomorrow. Louisiana residents were cleaning up on Thursday after Hurricane Francine tore through the area. Francine arrived in the French Quarter. The storm made landfall in southern Louisiana on Wednesday and has continued to barrel across the U.S. South, pounding the region with heavy rains and gusty winds. In Louisiana's St. Mary Parish, Dustin Wiggins was taking stock of the damage. Francine weakened from a Category 2 hurricane to a post-tropical cyclone about 90 miles south of Memphis, Tennessee, the U.S. National Hurricane Center said later on Thursday, packing maximum sustained winds of 25 miles per hour. Heavy rainfall and tornado threats will continue across portions of Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and the Florida Panhandle, the NHC added. The storm left more than 400,000 homes and businesses without power. Oil and gas producers said they were further curtailing output due to power issues. Louisiana Governor Jeff Landry and President Joe Biden each declared a state of emergency in anticipation of the storm. That frees up emergency management resources and potential financial aid in the event of serious damage. Latest updates on the Ukraine-Russian conflict now. Russia claims that they have recaptured a swath of territories in its western Kursk region where Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky conceded Moscow's troops were mountains of counteroffensives. However, in Russia, fears grow among Russians over long-range long missile strikes hitting their hometowns while Russian President Vladimir Putin warned Ukraine's Western allies that permitting Ukraine to use longer-range weapons to hit targets inside his country would put NATO at risk of warning with Russia. The Defense Ministry says its forces have recaptured 10 settlements in the Kursk region from Ukraine. It released images showing what it said were pontoon crossings being built over a river and Ukrainian military vehicles destroyed by Russian troops. It said the videos were filmed in the Kursk region. In Kyiv, the Ukrainian president, in a press briefing with his Lithuanian counterpart, confirmed Russian actions in Kursk and also responded to a question about the threat from neighboring Belarus, which has amassed troops close to the Ukrainian border. Ukraine launched its incursion into Russia on the 6th of August. Its commander-in-chief said late last month that Kyiv had seized 100 settlements and almost 1,300 square kilometers of territory. Kyiv said it hoped Moscow would divert troops to Kursk from eastern Ukraine. In Ukraine, the Russian army has moved deeper into the east with the key city of Pokrovsk without a drinking water supply and gas for cooking and heating. Moscow's forces have battered Ukrainian territory with relentless missile and drone attacks. The last time war came to Ariol was 1941, when it came under Nazi occupation. And now, fighting's not far away once again. Ukraine's incursion into neighboring Kursk region is little more than 100 miles south. And if the West does allow Kyiv to strike deeper inside Russia, this city would be in range. I am worried. Of course I am. But I hope they won't reach us. I really hope so. Of course, they could reach here, without a doubt, but only if our valiant armed forces allow them to. 
And finally tonight, in remembrance of the tragic 9-11 attacks, a number of pizzerias across New York City are honouring the first responders for answering the call 23 years ago. Half a dozen pizza shops, including uh, Lombardia's and America's first pizzeria and Prince Street Pizza, have created walls of honour where celebrity photos have been swapped out for World Trade Center responders who are all still living with 9-11 related illnesses. The photos of Will Gimeno, Beth Cap, Michael Weinstock, along with many others, are hung on the walls of half a dozen pizzerias across the city. We humbly call this Walls of Honor. Honoring 9-11 first responders who 23 years ago on this very same day rushed to ground zero without thinking twice. Today, they are battling 9-11 related illnesses and to honor their bravery in a unique New York way, well-known pizza shops like Prince Street Pizza and Lombardi's America's First Pizzeria are swapping their celebrity photos with the ones of these real life heroes. The Feel Good Foundation part with Rethink to launch this campaign, one to help raise awareness and educate the public about September 11. Thank you so much for joining us. That is it for World News Tonight. On a programming note, World News Tonight will not return for the whole of next week as we'll be giving the way for the extended coverage for the upcoming presidential election. We'll return the week after once Sri Lanka has decided. Stay tuned as Nadi Balasuri will join 